Hello, my name is Kiriath, and today I'm going to show you the progress that I've made on my Dread mob, my Space Marine Dreadnought army, which is now at 2,752 points of Dreadnoughts, and also three Tech Marines in there as well, just because I don't have four Chaplain Dreads yet. I've only got the one, so I do need some Tech Marines around. I say need, I just like being able to repair them. It's fine. So it's got quite big, the Dread mob, at this point, so I thought we'd go through the additions to it, the kind of the plans for future, and just basically show what we've got so far for it. So before we get started, first of all, apologies for the state of my voice. I lost my voice on Saturday. It's now Monday. It's mostly back, but I'm pretty sure I've got some sort of cold or something. It's not great. And uh, also, the colour scheme, because I know this is going to come up. The colour scheme is contentious, it is quite Marmite, I know some of you really like it, some of you really don't like it. The idea behind it was I wanted something that was quick and easy to paint that I could replicate very, like, with minimal effort, with something quite striking. So I went for really mucky kind of gun metal and rust as, an, as a secondary colour, not as like an actual rust effect, but as almost like a, a core part of the colour of the army. It's... It, it has a certain look, let's put it that way. And I know some people like it and some people really don't. It's fine either way. So, let's take a look at what I've got so far. So, first up is the Tech Marines, which we'll blast through very quickly. This is the first Tech Marine I made. And, uh, yeah, it's it's a it's a Centurion suit with the drill still, still there, obviously, um, with a ridiculous bit of Skaven, like, warp crystal acting as a conversion beamer. So that was a Terminator arm with an assault cannon on it. Now it's acting as a conversion beamer. Very over the top, very daft. If anything, modelling for disadvantage in a way because he's a girthy lad and you can see him from a mile off, but it's fine because I just wanted something nice and, I don't know, nice and bulky to go along with the Redemptors. Now, of course, Pharos is on the way, as in he's literally on the way to my house. I've ordered one. Um, <laughs> and he's pretty chunky himself, but... There was no Primaris Tech Marine at the time, so I wanted something that had a bit of a bit of girth to it. I will say having the Gravis helmet in the Centurion suit is quite nice. I do quite like the look of that. I think it works pretty well. Just seems a bit, I don't know, a bit better than the actual Centurion helmets, which look angry all the time for some reason. So yeah, that is the first the first Tech Marine that I made. He is in-game runners having a Thunder Hammer due to the massive drill and a Conversion Beamer due to the ridiculous crystal gun. So, the other two were made very much on an emergency basis. <laughs> I, a couple of months ago, I was going to Warhammer World and realised that I did not have enough HQs for my now three-detachment Dreadnought army, so I had to make a couple very quickly. This guy is the work of about half an hour, so I'd already painted a Mark II Praetor from Forge World, actually. And I'd given him a, a combi melter, I'd given him a power fist, and I needed a tech marine. So I got a massive shoulder pad again from, I believe it was the Storm Fiends kit for the Skaven. Got a random cable I found somewhere, attached it to the backpack. Then I took the, that's like the arm support off a Nemesis Dread Knight, cut the vent off, put it on there, stuck another vent on that side. I need to recolor that one actually, it doesn't match the rest. And uh, the claw itself was made from the face bits of an Ambot, because of course it was. So this guy is run with what he has, a power fist, combi melter, and uh, and a server harness. So, yeah, I, for, for like, it was like half an hour adding the stuff to him and painting them, which is very basic. It was just lead belter and a coat of, of null, and that was it that I did on it. But given that it was the night before I was leaving for Warhammer World, I did not have a huge amount of time to do anything else. But still, still perfectly serviceable as a tech marine, and once I finished painting him and kind of messed about with him a little bit more... Be a, little more, be a little bit more keeping in with the rest of the force. And then the third one, it was the same the same night, pretty much, where, again, I needed tech marines. I did not have enough tech marines, and so this resin terminator, I can't remember where I got this one from. I can't remember what I got him for, whether it was part of a big pack of other terminators. I just had a random resin cataphractic terminator lying around, so stuck a backpack on there, that is part of an Imperial Knight that's forming the uh, the claw on the back there, along with another piece of Skaven machinery just stuck on the end. It's just a wrench that one of the little rat guys is holding off the warp lightning cannon kit. Uh, and again, he's run kind of as he is. He's got a power sword, he's got a storm bolter, he's got the armor indomitus for that 2 plus save, and, uh, and he's got the, the server harness. So 
yeah, those those were my very rapid, uh, oh dear god, I don't have enough HQs and I want them to be useful. Tech Marines? Yeah, let's build two Tech Marines quickly. So, those are the three Tech Marines in the, in the army, and the only non-Dreadnought things in it, you'll be happy to know. So, let's have a quick blast through the Redemptors. I think you've already seen most of these anyway, but still. Um, so, the first Redemptor I made, with relatively few modifications, an easy-to-build Redemptor, which, by the way, great value for money, because you can mess with them pretty easily, you can convert them pretty easily, and they are really quite cheap for the size of model that you get. So, yeah, all I really did to this was I added two launchers from the Forge World Ironclad Dreadnought kit, which is no longer in production. It hasn't been for ages. I didn't know I had it, and then I found the rest of the Dreadnought in a bits box having used the launchers on 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 a redemptor it's fine though because it, it got pressed into service elsewhere so yeah all i did with this was add those launchers on stick a stick a bit of um chaos accessory there just just for that added touch of heresy to an otherwise of course 100 percent loyal force and i wanted it to have a heavy onslaught not a heavy onslaught a onslaught gatling cannon to go with the heavy onslaught gatling cannon so i uh i Gave it a little bit of uh, a little bit of grey knight goodness there. I believe that's the is it the 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 silence silence a psy cannon something like that. I can't remember what the weapon name is, but I had that lying around, so that now acts as an onslaught gatling cannon because I wanted double double the goodness. So yeah, that was the first one I did. As I say, easy to build, quite very quick to put together, and this was also the first time I attempted the paint job. And having spent not a lot of time painting it, I was super happy with it. I thought, yeah, I can reproduce this really quickly, really easily. And uh, it has got this, this striking look that I was going for. So, yeah, that is the first one. Second one was, um, yeah, it started to get a bit silly, <laughs> even on the second one. So that is the Fist of an Imperial Knight. As you can tell, I wanted it to look like it required extra power. So I stuck a Centurion backpack on the front there, gave it some extra cabling going into the arm and the shoulder, and then some cabling going into the hand itself, just there. I needed something to represent the Onslaught Gatling Cannon, along with the heavy one, so I just stuck a heavy bolter on there. I know that's not technically the same thing, but I just wanted a gun to show that there was a gun, you know? If we, if we ignore counts as the vast majority of this army becomes unusable, and luckily everyone who has faced it has gone, yes, that's fine, I see what you did there, not a problem. Um, it's not a tournament force, it's a stupid for, for for shots and giggles force, really, given the amount of firepower it has, that seems more appropriate. So yeah, that was, that was either the second or third, I'm not sure which, thinking about it, but again, another easy to build, nice and simple, nice and quick. And uh, I will say it was very easy to get that on there. I just chopped the Redemptor Fist off. I put the Knight Fist together around where I'd cut the other fist away. And it fit pretty flush. It looks it looks pretty legit. It looks like it was supposed to be there. Which I was very impressed with. <laughs> because it meant I didn't have to do a lot to adapt it. It just, it just fit round where the old fist was. And yeah, it was just ready to go from that point on. Which was, which was nice. It was a nice surprise. So I wanted another one with some, uh, with a bit of anti-vehicle firepower. So I went for the uh, the macro, the macro plasma incinerator. Except it's actually not one of those, as you can see. It's a, uh, <laughs> it's a heavy gauss cannon, I think. Gauss, gauss, however you want to pronounce it. It's from the Necron vehicle that can act either as an HQ, as a command barge, or as a, is it a redemption? Or I can't remember. Either way, I had one of these lying around, so uh, I decided to use that instead. So for this one, I cut away the lower part of the Redemptor arm. Again, another easy to build one for this one. I cut away the arm. I then took a part, part of the Nemesis Dread Knight that's been lying around in my house for I don't know how long. I haven't even had a Grey Knight's army. I don't know why I had one, but I did. Um... And I took the fist out and used that as the basis for attaching this. So there's like a little bridge section there. Um, and I wanted it to look like this was a heavy weapon or like an a, a unwieldy cumbersome weapon. So I took part of the arm support off that same Nemesis Dread Knight and I, I used it as like a brace on the shoulder pad so that it just looks a bit more ramshackle. So yeah, um, oh yeah. 
bit of storm bolter there to act as a onslaught gatling cannon and a bit of chaos launcher there as well as the iron storm rocket pod I, look I, I wanted it i wanted it fully kitted kitted out and that seemed like a fun way to do it so this one looks very ramshackle more ramshackle than most of them to be fair but uh, i quite like that about it it's like the it's like the the one that they didn't have time to do it properly so they just slapped everything on yeah I, I like this one this is the first of the truly mad ones i think to be fair then i did start to get properly silly so this is Skullbeard, and he has a face made of skulls. This is also on a base that was made for me by Fluff and Fury, which is incredibly kind of them, which has got the channel logo uh, actually on the base, which is awesome. I love it. So yeah, uh, this has got the chainsaw from an Imperial Knight. So I'd already used the fist. I was like, why not? Why not see if we can get the chainsaw on there? And it worked, kind of. It's oversized. It doesn't fit properly at all. But I wanted it to look basically like this thing just charged in swinging wildly, and I did have it further up, but it just didn't it just didn't sit right. It looked really odd, it looked really stunty, like it wouldn't have the full range of movement required to be effective. So uh so what I did was I just took the arm section from the Imperial Knight and I closed it around the arm section of the Redemptor. So it is longer than it would be otherwise, but Wrapping it in chain and uh, and making it a bit like uh, giving it a bit of extra length, it just worked better. It, it just looked more feasible. I mean, it looked it looks ridiculous, obviously, but that's kind of the point. Let's be honest. Um, so yeah, I, I I I felt like that worked better. So this is where it started to get properly daft for the Redemptors. It started to get very silly, and I'm okay with it. I'm okay with how silly it got because. It was fun putting this one together and seeing how it turned out, and yeah, yeah, uh, definitely one of the more, definitely one of the more mad creations, and like it, it sparked the spiral into insanity that <laughs> that came to encompass the rest of this army. So I like it. It's like this is the point where my brain just went, you know what? If we can do something, we should do it. Which some would argue not necessarily a good idea, but I, I beg to differ. Because that led to things like this. So this is actually relatively sensible. But the only reason I did this is because I came off the back of doing the chainsaw and I wanted to do something ranged. So the, if this was an actual <laughs> playable mark of Redemptor, I would be super happy. Super, super happy. So that is the, the carapace launcher off an Imperial Knight again. Um... I just had all these parts lying around for when I built my knight because I never varied the build. I just left it how it was. So I had these pieces just sat on sprues doing nothing. And uh, yeah, this one is the first one where I kind of, outside of sticking skulls everywhere, experimented with the carapace a bit. So I cut the bottom off. You get two of these, right? You get like a, an eagle version. I think you get two different eagle versions thinking about it, but they're slightly different. I cut the bottom off the other one, placed that in that groove there, and then I put this one just above it so it met there. So you've got this kind of stepped effect. There is like a gap here, but I quite liked the gap. I did fill it with uh, with some plastic card cut to size, but I actually preferred the gap in the armor. It just looked a little bit better to me. Um, but it raises the height of that front armor. And for some reason, this just looks way chunkier. It looks it looks like far more... It just looks more heavily armoured for some reason. I mean, if we take the, the first one, it's just a standard, just a standard one, um, and then compare the, like, the way the armour looks, the one with the missile launcher just looks chunkier for some reason. There's not really much of a difference outside of raising that bit of carapace armor up, but it does it does make a genuine difference to the the kind of the feeling of the model. So as an experiment, that worked pretty well. I was quite happy with that. Um, I also gave this uh, Grey Knight feet uh, from the Nemesis Dread Knight again. I just fancied it standing maybe a little bit taller, and there's these supports that. Or on the back of the legs as well, again from the Nemesis Dread Knight, which actually it doesn't need because there's no there's no like um 
oh, what is the what is the word? There's no recoil from missiles firing. I just liked the idea of it having them, so that's why I put them on. Logic was not part of this uh, part of this army project, um, <laughs> as I'm sure you can tell. I also wanted the heavy onslaught Gatling cannon on the other side. Uh, I was going to try and faff around and swap the uh, the ammo drum over to the other side, but I looked at it and I was like, is it actually worth it? Is anyone going to care or notice? Is anyone going to really sit there and go, oh, I don't know, that should be on the other side. And so far, no one has said that. They've all just said they liked it because of the missile launcher and how it should be a, a, a legit loadout. So I'm not too fussed about the fact that that technically should be on the other side because... No one else seems to care, so <laughs> why think about it too much? And for this one, I kept the the small onslaught Gatling cannon, and I put it on the top there instead. Again, it, it cuts down on the field of fire that it would be able to actually use, but who cares? It looks cool, and that's the important bit. So yeah, I, this is, I think, one of my... This was my favourite Redemptor, I think. I think it's fair to say this was my favourite Redemptor until um, I got extra silly. And then just for pure madness, uh, this one fully took the award for my favourite Redemptor because there's so much going on here that's just ridiculous and stupid. And uh, it's why I like it so much. So again, I, it's got the it's got the base with the logo on, which I'm super happy about. I deliberately saved one of them for this particular Dreadnought. Um, so as you can see, only one arm. It's only got the one. Two arms, for some reason, look like overkill when you had the Warp Lightning Cannon on top. So, as you can see, it's fully just got a Skaven Warp Lightning Cannon on the top. I used the the back of the uh, Macro Plasma Incinerator there to make it look a bit more techy. Um, got rid of the Lightning Bolt thing on the top of that. Got a little bit of a glow effect on the inside of the Warp Lightning Cannon stuff here and there. I could do with working on it a little bit more, but it doesn't matter too much. Um, I had these from a Storm Raven, I think it is? Storm Talon? Storm Talon. The smaller one. I had uh, I had some of the rocket pods from that lying around, uh, and I had, I believe, the bits attaching them. I think that's from an Imperial Knight as well. I think that's like a joint or something, but it formed this kind of nice circular rail that made it look as though these things could tilt forwards and backwards. Obviously, they can't, but it made them look like they could. And having made the front look more up armoured by shifting the thing, <laughs> shifting one of these armour plates up, um, for this one I just decided to go full mad, and instead of shifting it up, I just put both on, but I chopped the bottom of that one off so it sat on top of there. So it looks super heavy armour on the front. Um, yeah, yeah, this is the maddest of the Redemptors by far. I also put the bottom of the legs on backwards, just because I liked the stance it gave it. It looked very forward, like, I don't know, like, forceful, almost? I, I don't know. I just, I tried it. I tried it for the hell of it, and it it looked cool, so I kept it. That's that's pretty much how that worked. Went very, I went way too hard on the dry brushing on this one. I just left it very streaky, which I keep meaning to fix, but time spent fixing the streaky is less time spent building other dreadnoughts, which is why I've not got round to it. So yeah, uh, <laughs> that's by far the most ridiculous one. So, I started working on other Dreadnoughts alongside the Redemptors because I was getting a bit fed up with the Redemptors. One of them being this here, uh, Chaos Decimator Siege Engine, which is acting as a Leviathan. I do have a Leviathan now. Went to Warhammer World on Friday, as I say, and uh, I may have bought one with two of the autocannon arms because, yeah... So, essentially, this was out of stock forever. I thought they'd stop making it all together, and I was... It was the, the same Warhammer World trip where I would had to build the Tech Marines the night before. Um, I was sat in Bugman's having lunch, like, I'm going to get a Dreadnought. What do I get? Do I get a Leviathan? Do I get a Contemptor? Derrideo could be fun. And uh, I was looking through the store and noticed that this was for sale again, that it was it was available and you could get it, and... I, I just I had to get it in case it disappeared for years on end for a second time. Um, so I bought this and I bought a Gravflux Bombard and a Leviathan Siege Claw and I run it as a Leviathan. And the uh, the Icarus, I think it's the Icarus uh, anti-air thing for the knights I had lying around spare 
And I wanted to give this thing a couple of 100 killer missiles just for the crack, so I thought it'd be fun if they were the most non-suitable hunter killer missiles essentially that's what <laughs> that is it kind of acts as the hunter missile killer there's there's like there's two that i pay for on this um so i kind of more envision just two high powered shots or whatever the target is just for the fun of it and because i liked the look of like having a shoulder mounted gun on this already like ridiculous model i could have made it a bit shorter I kind of made the legs a bit more bent, but I wanted it to stand tall and be kind of noticeable next to the Redemptors. Because the Redemptors are big, chunky boys, and they take up a lot of, like, real estate on the board. I wanted something that could hold its own next to them, so uh, I made it a bit taller. I also nearly dropped it as well. Um, so, yeah, that that's that's the currently the only Leviathan. There is a second one that I need to build, and then that'll take me up to two Leviathans in the army. But... I did a bit here and there to try and limit the chaos stuff. I shaved the uh, chaos face off part of the off part of the legs. I filed and shaved off the chaos icon that's on that side. You can't see it on that side due to the gun. Um, I added some Imperium style stuff here and there. The bits that shaved off not so great. I used some Centurion armor plates just to just to lessen the impact a little bit. It's difficult to de-chaosify a chaos decimator siege engine, but I did what I could without without wrecking like without wrecking the model or without taking away some of the bits I really liked, like the kind of stuff pushing through the metal plates. So yeah, I, I did what I could. I'm happy with it. I like it. And I have to admit, I'm super happy with how the green turned out um for, for this. Uh in fact, speaking of the green, um there'll be a link in the description. The green is dead simple, and it works for loads of stuff. Like you can see it on the grav flux bombard and all the like, all the cabling. It's the same green. It goes on to every single one of these models. Wherever there's like a power cable or something, it's the same green. All it is, and you can buy this in a bundle on Element Games. I'll link the bundle in the description. It is just pallid witch flesh, which I like because it's a little bit warmer. It's it's not it's not as cold as some of the other other like white paints. Um, pallid witch, also it's got a decent amount of pigment so pallid witch flesh which I find really easy to work with out of all the whites then fluo green over the top, don't, do not water down the fluo green you want it to go on a little bit lumpy you put like a bit on the brush, get it on where you want and rather than do like a couple of thin coats you just get, get a decent amount on the brush and you just take that one bit and you smear it around. Now, it might look like it's going to dry and take out all the detail, but it doesn't. If you keep moving it about until you're happy with the coverage you've got, it dries really thin, but nice, like a nice kind of fluorescent lime colour. And then over the top, I just put Hex Wraith Flame. That's, that's all this green is. It's super simple, super easy to do. It maintains all of the detail, like the... The kind of inner sections are dark, the outer sections are light. You can still see all the uh, all the little ridges in the cabling. So let me just... You can still see all the little ridges in the cabling. You don't lose any detail whatsoever, but you end up with this nice, vibrant green that is dark in all the right places and light in all the right places. And all it is is Pallid Witch Flesh, Vallejo Fluo Green, and Hex Wraith, Hex Wraith Flame. Uh, so yeah, I, I've, there's, I'll be a link in the description for a bundle that's got all three of those in that bundle. So you just have to buy that one thing, and that's how you make this green. So yeah, that's the uh, that's the current Leviathan, even though it's technically a Decimator Siege Engine. Okay, now we're on to the non, non-Redemptor stuff. And uh, I'm taking this stuff out of the tray. I've got a proper carry case again. I had to, <laughs> I had to buy a new one because my old one got nicked. Not from me, I lent it to someone and uh, unfortunately it went missing along with the army that they were carrying in it, which was not great for them. They offered to buy me a new one and I said, don't do that, just rebuild your army first because a carry case is what, 50 quid? A 30k Death Guard army, bit more than 50 quid. So, okay, so let's have a look at the, let's have a look at the Redemptors, uh, not Redemptors, Contemptors first. So I think you've already seen this lad, but this guy is now doubling up as uh, something for my <laughs> D&D campaign. Um, well, the campaign that my friend runs, um, that I play in. I'm playing a Warforged Artificer, and now when I cast in large, my character turns into this, which is fun. Um, oh, 
freaking out. So yeah, this is this is one of the contaminators. Uh, there's three in the army currently. Uh, I'm not really happy with the lining effect on these. I need to I need to redo them. But again, I could either repaint or I could build more dreadnoughts. And so far, building more dreadnoughts is how things have gone. Um, so yeah, <laughs> I'm not really sure where the idea to put like a big wheel on the back of this came from. I had it as part of the warp lightning kit, and I just I thought I'd give it a try and see what it looked like, and I just really liked it for some reason. It's a bit steampunk, it's a bit weird, but uh, yeah, I, I just like the way it looked, so I I kept it. So yeah, that's one of the one of two relic contemptors um, with close combat weapons, obviously. This was actually a left-handed fist, I believe? Left-handed? Right-handed? Either way, it was on the other side, so I, I chopped it off and uh, rotated it and stuck it on the other arm, which... I can tell that it's not quite right, but so far no one else has been able to, so I'm taking that as a job well done. So yeah, that's one of two Relic Contemptors, um, and the other one has got uh, the, one of the most ridiculous weapon conversions that I've done yet. Again, all of this green is done the same way. The way that I described earlier, it's all done that way. Um, so this one has got two weapons from the uh, the uh, Mortark kit? Is it the Mortark? Big, big undead lads. In fact, I'll just show you because I've seen more gas. That's it. These guys. And again, green done pretty much the same way. So yeah, uh, it's weapons from this kit, the Morgast kit. It comes with so many different weapons options, and I wanted to use them because I've only built one of the guys because I only need one. Um, and so uh, when it came to making another relic contemptor without wanting to have to buy more weapons, I took the two knackered assault cannons that I had. Because they were properly knackered, they'd been beaten to hell. The barrels were all na like, like snapped and chipped, and I don't know what had happened to them. But at some point, they'd been trashed. So I took the uh, I took those because I didn't want assault cannons on these anyway, and used a bit of green stuff and some chain and just rammed a couple of these Morgast blades in to form another close combat relic contemptor, which uh, yeah. <laughs> A bit mad, again, a bit mental, but there you go. I quite like it. It's A lot of this stuff is silly but fun, which is really the watchword for the entire army. So the other Contemptor that I've got is a Mortis Contemptor. Again, I could do with finishing... Oh, I haven't done his... Uh, I've not done his flipping little tuft of hair on the top. Oh, the neglect is unreal on this boy. Again... Got a big wheel on the back because I liked it on the other one, so I thought, why not do it again? Got a random bit of cabling off a Typhon maybe Siege Tank, I believe. That's from. I think it's from the Laz Cannon off to the side of it, in fact. One of the sponsors. So yeah, this has got two twin auto cannons. Pumps out a nice amount of pretty damaging fire. This is a Thousand Suns Contemptor as well, which, uh, which was sent to me very, very generously by uh, Scarlet Kingdom. I'll put a link to her her Twitter and channel in the description. She was really nice and and sent this over to me so I could increase the dread mob by another contemptor. So yeah, I <laughs> I, do, I like this. I do like this model. I have to admit, I really like the look of the uh, the other contemptor that the Thousand Sons have got because I'd love to use that as a chaplain dread. But it's it's yeah, <laughs> there's so many things I need to buy and. Uh, Although it is tempting. But yeah, that's the that's the third Contemptor. I'm saving the one Chaplain for last, because I'm super proud of it, and I think it's my favourite Dreadnought currently. Um, oh, I'll tell you what, let's have a look at the... I'll show you the Ironclad from Forge World that I didn't realise I had. So that is the Ironclad Dreadnought from Forge World. I lost the head at some point, um, but he did get... He, he did get pressed into service. Once I found him, and I was like, well, okay, I've got this guy. I need to paint his eyes. Um, I've got this guy. I should use him. I should use him. He shouldn't languish any further. Didn't have any weapons for him, and Fort World, the last time I checked, it didn't seem to have anything in the way of normal Dreadnought weapons, which is disappointing, and I wasn't, I didn't know what to do apart from buy more Dreadnoughts and kind of try and kit him out that way. Then I remembered I still had the Laz Cannons from my Typhon Heavy Siege tank, which I don't intend to stick on it because it's expensive enough as it is to run. Um, actually on the tabletop like points wise it's mad so 
I took those last cannons and I took the Spartans and I stuck them on the side of the Dreadnought and then I stuck the armor that would have gone on the Typhon to protect the last cannons on the Dreadnought as well. And uh, and yeah, he he's now, however many years after buying this thing, I don't know when I bought it, I just know that it was in my bits box for, for ages to the point where it stopped being produced and I didn't even know I had it. Um, it's now actually being used. The guy... The guy is getting to do something, which is nice. Finally pressed into service for a good cause, obviously. The dread mob. So yeah, that's uh, that's the ironclad that you can't buy anymore, unfortunately. They don't do any of the old style dreadnoughts apart from the uh, Salamanders one, if I remember correctly, which is super sad because they used to do some really nice ones. Then we've got the guy with the massive gun, <laughs> which... Yeah, I said it was getting silly with the Redemptors. This is one of the silliest. I mean, there's two that I would class as being particularly silly. This being one, and then the one that we're going to look after, look at after this. Uh, so yeah, I just wanted one that was holding a heavy onslaught Gatling cannon. So I did that. So that's a Venerable Dread. Um, I made a kind of second arm out of the unused leg armor, which I'll be honest, could be better done. But the the idea was <laughs> the idea was simpler than the execution. So I'll probably rework it at some point after a while. Gave it a handle there so that he's holding it up the top. I tried having the fist holding it under the bottom, but then it was at a weird angle and it didn't look right. So thought give it a big old give it a big old handle on top to hold instead, that'd be fine. Then discovered that uh, this was an easy to build heavy onslaught Gatling cannon. I lost the end where you can see the barrels. And I was like, well, I I, I don't know how to I just don't know how to replace that. What do I do to replace that? I can't find it. I don't know where it is. I don't know how to make one. I know. I'll just stick another assault cannon on the end of it. So that's what I did. So, so that's from a contemptor, that bit. And uh, that is from, uh, that's from a redemptor. And together they form a ridiculous, ridiculous sized weapon. Okay. The other silly, stupid thing would be that so that's uh, <laughs> so dumb I wanted to make a dreadnought with a gun for a face so I so I did I made a dreadnought with a gun for a face that is literally it again another heavy onslaught Gatling cannon I had lying around I thought it'd be funny so <laughs> so there you go I'm afraid that's all the logic or thought you're going to get for this one. I thought it would be funny to have a Dreadnought with a gun for a face, and so there it is. That's it. Now, obviously, you cannot run a Dreadnought with an Assault Cannon, a, a Onslaught Gatling Cannon, a Heavy Onslaught Gatling Cannon, and a Power Fist, especially since two of those guns you can't have on a normal Dreadnought anyway. So this just acts as a Mortis Dreadnought, <laughs> because that's the only thing that makes sense with how many guns he's got on him. Really dumb, really silly, but still, again, that sums up a lot of this army, dumb and a bit silly. There's this guy, which I also need to tidy up a little bit. The X went a bit wrong, that was a last minute decision the night before going to Warhammer World on Friday, which I regret doing because it's made it a little bit a little bit mucky. I could do with going back and fixing that up, but that was part of my old Space Marine Force, uh, the one that's like 21 Terminators. I had a Mortis Dread in there, converted from a... Uh, Death Company Dread, and I thought I'd I thought I'd repaint him, press him into service for the Dread Mob. So, yeah, that was a, a late addition, but that makes four normal, um, four normal Redemptor, uh, four normal Dreadnought in like Mortis configuration, one Contemptor in Mortis configuration, one Leviathan, and then yeah, it just it just bulked out the army a little bit. More Mortis Dreads is never something to complain about, especially using the uh, the the twin auto cannons, two of those, they they can be they can be pretty nasty. So, yeah, that was a, a late addition to the force, but I don't know. I quite like him now. I quite like him. I think the green looks looks funky, especially on the skull. Finally, finally, before we call this video to an end, because it's been long, real long, is the chaplain dreadnought, which uh, I got from a. A very nice, a very nice person on Twitter whose oh his handle escapes me right now, but yeah, it's a proper old venerable dreadnought, so it's metal, and uh, yeah, I, I've I've wanted to use 
Chaplin dreadnoughts in this in this force for a while because then you can properly have a full have a full army of dreadnoughts without going um, without going blood angels because I want to use Iron Hands chapter tactics because it's ridiculous. So yeah, using the old Forge World rules for Chaplin dreadnoughts is the is the way is the way forward for that. So this is the first of hopefully four. But I'm super happy with this guy. So I, I stuck wings onto the like onto the exhaust stacks at the back. In fact I'll just turn them around. So from the back there's like two sets of wings there. Uh, and then I attach the spears at the front. Just to make it stand out more. I mean you've already got the wing motif there and there, so I could have just left it, but I really wanted this to stand out and I wanted it to look special, you know, look different, look unique in this force, and that seemed like a like a good way to do it, like really, really show that this is a leader, not just another dreadnought. So that's what I went with for that. So yeah, that's the uh, that's the new Chaplin dread, the new addition to to lead one of the detachments. So how I'm running this, I mean, it's yeah, I, I like him. He's cool. So how I'm running this army is obviously in no way tournament or competitive friendly. It can't be. Uh, like the rule of threes and stuff, I'm totally in contra <laughs> Like I'm not even paying attention to that. It's currently being run in four detachments, which again, people don't have a problem with, so it's fine. The people that I'm, I've played so far are just like, they know that it's like a daft army and that it's a, a silly project, project force and not meant to be taken seriously, so... Um, it's running four detachments, uh, two spearhead, two vanguard. The two vanguard are a tech marine and a, well, a chaplain dread, three redemptors and a contemptor. The other uh, vanguard is a tech marine and three redemptors and a contemptor. And the two, the two spearheads, tech marine, three mortis dreads. Sorry, two mortis dreads and the leviathan. And then the other spearhead is another tech marine, two mortis dreads, and the contemptor. So it's it's bred across quite a bit, but it it works pretty well. And to be honest, it's surprising how effective this has been. But I don't care about that. It's one of those things where I made the army for fun. Um, it's very much just a fun project. It was not supposed to be good. And I, I, you guys probably remember me joking about how it's going to be terrible. And a few people said, "Oh, you might find that it's not actually that bad, um, <laughs> just because of the the like the composition of it." And it turns out you were correct. The fact is that, for the most part, people aren't stacking enough anti armor to deal with a force that is like toughness seven across the board, and combine that with like the iron hand stuff, so you're getting a feel no pain on top of it, and and having tech marines like it's actually not an easy force to deal with just because of how gimmicky it is it, it's like stacking high toughness units and it throws out a stupid amount of firepower i mean the redemptors alone i tend to run four of them as having onslaught gatling cannons and heavy onslaught gatling cannons they get 18 shots each so it's like it, it can be like the weight of fire is is excessive and it is a difficult force to deal with. But the thing is, I don't play it to win. I usually play it with daft decisions for fun. Um, an example being, like, when I played against Leaky Cheese and a few people, uh, there was a unit of Hellblasters that was a genuine threat to the Dreadnoughts, and there was also a unit of Eldar Rangers. The Eldar Rangers fired, did nothing, and I thought it'd be more fun to obliterate them in a shower of red mist than it would be to shoot the Hellblasters that were actually doing damage. So that's what I did. It's a silly force made for the fun of it, so when I play, I play it as something that I'm doing for the fun of it, not to necessarily obtain any sort of meaningful win, because that's not what it's for. It's just it's just a fun project done because I fancy doing a fun project. That has admittedly got a bit out of hand, because now with that other Leviathan, it's like 3,000 points of Dreadnoughts, which is stupid. But I'm just enjoying working on it. It's just a fun force to play with. It's a fun force to put together. It's... It's fun to paint, it's fun to convert. Yeah, it's uh, it's inadvertently turned into one of the most kind of fulfilling army projects I've ever done just because I don't get bored of it. And it's easy to keep it fully painted and it's easy to keep it maintained and keep it up to date. And yeah, yeah, no regrets whatsoever for, for this force. It's 
it's daft and it's stupid and it's it's fun and that's the important bit. So, yeah, that is the current state of the Dread Mob. I'm sure I will update once again when I've added more Dreadnoughts to it, obviously, because why why wouldn't you do that? Why wouldn't you add another three Chaplin Dreadnoughts and no Leviathan? Maybe I still need to get three Invictor War Suits, which I know technically aren't Dreadnoughts, but I'm going to convert them to look like that. There's so much, so much to do with a City Force. Thank you very much for watching if you've managed to sit through all of that, I applaud you and your uh, and your resilience. Um, I hope that was interesting or fun, or that it's given you an idea for a silly force of your own. Feel free to let me let me know what you think of this stupid army in the comments down below. And uh, as always, feel free to click the things, Patreon, video, subscribe, all that stuff. Click it if you like. Don't click it if you don't want to. And as ever, there is an affiliate link in the description for Element Games. If you click that and buy something, I get a little something to send you that way. It's a nice way to support the channel because it requires no extra effort. You were going to buy the stuff anyway, and you save 15 to 25%. And if you want the little bundle that uh, that allows you to do that green that I've, that I've got across this whole force, then that will be in the description as well. I will label that clearly. And you can grab all three of the uh, paints required for that green just in one easy click. So you can you can do that if you would like to give that a go as well. Thank you very much for watching. I will see.